Brown Bear Country. It's the most spectacular place you can imagine. It's a land of danger and adventure. It's a land where life and death teeter on an invisible line. From the bloodthirsty mosquito to the great gray whale, from the suicidal life mission of a spawning salmon to the hardy alder bush. Everything in nature is connected, and everything has a purpose. Better than eight years of my life have been spent living out of a tent in the wilderness. The more time I spend here, the more the intricacies of God's creation astound me. This bountiful land is governed by the most fascinating animal I've ever hunted with claws like grapple hooks, a sense of smell that's seven times that of a bloodhound, and being quicker than a racehorse, an Alaskan brown bear is capable of weighing 1,500 pounds. With no natural predators other than themselves, without sport hunting, the ungulate and even the salmon population in these areas would be in serious jeopardy. And of course, once an animal's food source is diminished, disease and starvation is sure to follow. Aside from conservation, I believe it's the inherent challenge of bear hunting that is so appealing. The chase for a mature boar tests every facet of a hunter's skill set. And when you factor in an indefinite measure of danger, you get what I feel is the greatest big game hunt in North America. The book of Genesis tells us that mankind was created to rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Man was made to utilize everything in nature, and also protect it. In short, man was created to be a hunter. Those of us who are extremely lucky are afforded the opportunity to hunt the regal Alaskan brown bear. This adventure takes place in the springtime. The bears have recently left their dens. Sows and cubs are feeding on the new vegetation sprouting along the beaches and on the south-facing mountainsides. Boars are roaming relentlessly in search of an estrus sow with which to pass along their bloodlines. set up. Had a little bit of on and off sunshine. Hopefully it's just some squalls and get her dialed in. Sealed. Season doesn't open until day after tomorrow. Take this heap of junk into a camp. Get her rolling. 20 days. Alaska Peninsula. Now that I got the tent up, the rain stops. Oh, it's kind of a cluster. 
Wind wasn't too bad, so that's the main thing. Get about 20 miles an hour of wind where you're setting up your tent. Not easy, not, e not an easy one-man show. But Lonnie's on his way in. You've got a pretty stiff well, quartering headwind. Lock them up. Nicely done. A little too high on the tide to land on the beach. He gave her a whirl, but it was a little squirrely. Kind of nice having another option so you don't have to land it, uh, so you can still land it high tide. A little squirrely down on the beach, was she? Yes. A little narrow, too. <laughs> yeah, she's getting narrower and squirrelier about a minute. <laughs> Filming's more dangerous than bear hunting. <laughs> I'm gonna go for a cool shot here, ducking under the berm. I'm chicken. <laughs> You pictured? Uh, so is this camp about what you pictured? Yeah, I wasn't sure if we were gonna be right at the sea level or if you were gonna be up on a little uh, flat spot. I wasn't sure, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah you never know until you get here, I guess. So you've hunted out of this before? Or? Nope, nope, never hunted this spot. Day before season, make sure we got it dialed in. Feel good? Well, and he said he's about Two and a half inches high at 100, so probably four high, but we're not gonna do anything with it. That's considered on. We've got a couple of whale vertebrae right at our camp, too. There's another one wedged in the rocks over here. Lonnie was a pleasant, soft-spoken man. A business owner from Muscatine, Iowa, this was our first hunt together. Having seen my videos, Lonnie had a good idea of what he was getting into. After several phone conversations with him, I was looking forward to our hunt together. We spent the first day glassing. The weather was far from perfect, but we did see a few bears and we were excited for the season to get underway. Looks like a low nines more up in the clouds. A little before noon. He's out cruising for chicks. We got this same bear, it looks like about a nine, nine foot board, my best guess. Likes it up in the high country. Kind of neat just watching him. He just meanders along pretty slow. He stops every once in a while. He's getting good up uphill thermals coming at him, so he just stops once in a while and sniffs and sniffs, so we don't have to make a decision. Unless, until we see him tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> tomorrow, tomorrow. Day, day five, a bear like that definitely looks pretty good. Up there, he doesn't look so good, but he gets down a little closer to the beach where we don't have to stink up the country and have a high percentage stock, then it's a different deal, but. and feathers and bones all over the place around here. I don't know. Seen some fox tracks. I haven't seen any fox. Might also be the eagles, I, I would imagine. They probably get them once in a while, but... Our fair weather's slipping away from us, Lonnie. Yeah, it's, uh, it's like a foggy day in Iowa. Well, I went on a grizzly hunt in central Alaska back in 2013. 
and uh, ended up with a seven foot bear. So as a child, I, uh, or a teenager, I guess, I used to read a lot of uh, hunting books and hunting magazines. And of course the stories that get in the print are always the, one, the big ones. So you always dream of those uh, big uh, brown bears, Kodiak bears from Alaska. So I had it in the back of my mind. I wanted to come back after that first bear and uh, experience the Alaska country again, but also to uh, hunt for a, a big bear. So we got 10 days, and I think we're in a pretty good spot. We saw saw one, two cubs, and then two other bears yesterday. Season just opened today. The bear we saw, well, we saw him yesterday, watched him. He's kind of right on that lower scale of, you know, a, a true trophy bear. Probably just a little bit below the scale, at least for this area. A lot of areas of Alaska, that'd be a, a good bear. Definitely a trophy, a shooter in the first day, but there's definitely some whoppers here. This this area has the genetics and the conditions and the feed to, to produce bears well over 10 foot. You know, that's that's gotta be an exceptional bear, an old bear, but they're here. It's one of the toughest things about hunting in this place is the weather can be really, really bad. Uh, it can be bad for long periods of time. The big bears are definitely here, but it takes a lot of patience. And, you know, the longer you wait, the longer you hold out. You always run a risk of not getting an opportunity because they're still wild animals. And as good as the bear hunting is here, you can go for days and not see them, particularly when the weather's bad. But to shoot one of those giants that's usually what it takes is you gotta you gotta hold off and let the let the smaller ones walk Got a good bear walking across this flat I'm gonna see which way he kind of works bear laid down in that sand blow Trying to figure out what we want to do. Well, we made a run at that bear. Laid down in that uh, sand blow and five minutes into the stock. It would have taken us about 10, 15 minutes to get there. About five minutes into it, he got back up. We had a real tight window on the wind and I figured he was following a sow. When we woke up this morning, we saw a bear up in that opening. Now there's a bear there now, that's the boar. So yesterday we saw a sow on this hillside and then just here about an hour ago, that boar he worked right across. So I think that sow came across during the night. He was on her tail. I figured he'd show up in that opening where we saw that sow this morning. Sure enough, there he is. With both the wind and the thermals working against us, coupled with the fact this bear was on the move, the best option for us was to back out. Not every hunter would have understood this, but as his guide, I was encouraged when Lonnie didn't question my decision to call off the stalk. Restraint is one of the toughest disciplines to master in hunting. It's one of the many skills that can only be learned by trial and error. But that sow has got another boar with him. I didn't get a good look at him, but he looked like a pretty good boar as well. So we definitely got some good bear activity. We just gotta get it put together, but this seems like a pretty good one. I think he'd go, I think he'd go over nine and a half. From the moment I woke on day two, I knew the bears would be moving. The wind had died down, the rain had stopped, and the birds were singing. We ate a quick breakfast, saddled up, and headed for the lookout. There's a fresh track, about a, right about an eight inch track, so around a nine foot bear, right in our trail. This morning as we were walking to the glass and knob, walked within, well, within 20 yards of our tent last night. Keep our scent in one area, so our camp and our glassing knob, we're kind of keeping them close together on purpose, just so we're not casting any extra scent out that we have to. 
But yeah, so we got two two good bears. We kind of made a short-lived run on the one yesterday. I figured was around the nine and a half mark. This other big one with the frosty ear tips. I think he's he's upper nines. He's a he's a big bear. He doesn't seem super long, but he's he's filled out mature mature bear shooter whatever he is. He's a big old mature bear. So we got a sow and two cubs running around, and then two other sows. So uh, yeah, conditions are good. I think we just got to be patient. Hopefully we get some good weather. You know, we'd, we'd be a little bit more aggressive perhaps if the wind was, you know, uh, was an offshore breeze, but right now this wind is not our friend. But we got a decent day today so far. Wind's picking up a little bit, but no rain. So yeah, these, it's pretty common that, that boar going up on the hill like that. In the mornings they like to come down because you get the thermals coming down the mountain so the, the boars will work the lowlands because they can smell the, the sows up on the hillsides. Their, their scent will come down into the bottom so then they can find the sows that way. Then during the day, they, you know, the thermals will go uphill about mid-morning. It's about 8, 8.30 right now. So they'll go up in the tops and then they'll run the ridges and smell. And then they'll catch the scent of the sows on the side hills that way. Right off the bat, I spotted a mature, blonde-eared boar that we'd seen a couple times in the preceding days. Close by were two sows with two cubs each. We were disappointed when the big boar walked over the ridge and out of sight. I saw that big boar not far from where they're at. He maybe flushed them out. Bear way up in the snow, cruising for ladies, cruising through the snow way up in the high country on too far mountain, too far away, headed the other way. But yeah, they seem to be moving today. I've seen three, three mature boars on the move. It's a good sign. Hopefully the weather holds. About nine o'clock, day number two. Seen two, three, two good boars close, and then this one, wind still wrong direction for us. Blowing from the ocean. The ocean's right back here. Blowing from the sea into this valley, so that's definitely a crutch for us. Keeping a watchful eye on the area where we last saw the blonde-eared bear, it wasn't 300 yards up the ridge where Lonnie spotted another bear taking a nap atop a rocky outcrop. Question for you about that bear up there. You know, you always think about a bear taking a nap in a alder is where he's hidden, and he's white out, white. You know, in the wide open space up there. Is that just because he's up so high and he figures nobody's going to bother him up there? Yep, that in part. And then there's really, obviously, there's really not much brush where he's at. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, when they're down low, they that. And they will though, they'll, they'll bet out in the open, particularly the bigger older boars. That, that's at least a middle-aged boar, I think, so. As I was sizing up the new bear, Blondie reappeared. Lonnie and I questioned which bear was bigger. As soon as Blondie caught the scent of the new bear, he took off back over the mountain. We were now quite certain the bedded bear was indeed a mature boar. Now that he's up on his feet, he looks uh, a lot bigger. Real long in the front legs. To be a consistently successful trophy brown bear hunter takes a wide ranging skill set. Experience, strength, stamina, endurance, and patience are necessary. But perhaps most important is mental fortitude. Enduring those cold, wet, windy days Alaska is so famous for is not for the faint of heart. To be willing to glass from the same location for 14 hours for up to 15 days and pass on immature bears is an absolute requirement if one hopes to get an opportunity at a mature boar. Simply put, brown bear hunting is a grind. Because it's so challenging, the successes are that much sweeter. 
The challenge is precisely why I feel the pursuit of a mature male brown bear is the ultimate sport hunt. So we're just kind of eyeballing this boar up here. And then another sow with two cubs pops out. There's two big boars right up in that country. Within a mile of, well we saw them pretty much right where those sow and cubs are. So yeah, there's lots of stuff happening here today. Get a little bit of sunshine and them bears start popping out. So there's the sow and the two cubs. And there's a big pop up above. I think he's looking to have relations. Well, it looks like he's gonna follow her at least for a little ways. A sow with two cubs there. A sow with two cubs there. And the boar right there. Stuffing everything together. He's come down quite a ways already. Wind's pretty much right this way. So we're gonna try to sneak up through here, get up on this opposite side of the mountain. That way we can kind of see what they do, but looks like he's herding them back up the hill. With the big bear spotted, it's hard to describe the excitement and anticipation one feels as you shoulder your pack and set out. A hunter is never quite sure if he'll return in a few hours or sometime the next day. I'm sure more than one of my clients has questioned whether he'd be coming back at all. With the big chocolate boar now in pursuit of the sow, our focus was to get in front of her and wait for the big boy to follow. Sow and cubs are just over the skyline. Went going this way. We're gonna scoot up. So he's right over, right over, just out of sight right here, but the sow came across this face and she ended up winding us and going up, but he doesn't know that yet. The longer the stalk, the more opportunity for variables. On this stalk, the fact that the boar decided to take a nap just over the crest of the ridge where we couldn't see him was one of many obstacles to come. on his feet. I've been waiting for about 30 minutes. I know he's up anyway. Kind of anticipating him to go around and come back around up here. glass and fly. We were waiting. Right there. The board was right there. He got up, went that way, never came out. I kind of have suspect that bugger to poke over this ridge and peek over. If it were a sheep, we'd shoot it, but a brown bear and all. So we're probably gonna have to get up and uh, climb to the top. We spent the next seven hours trying to relocate the bear. We hiked several miles in our search. We glassed every high point. I tried predator calling. I even threw rocks into the bush, hoping to catch a glimpse of movement. Eventually, it seemed all we were doing was spreading our scent and spoiling our chances for the remainder of our hunt. I pulled out my video camera to document our failed stock before heading back to camp. It'd be a lot purtier had we shot that bear. There he is. Hey, 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 hey. right there he is. See him on the skyline. How far is he? 
The bear quickly went over the backside of the ridge, and once again, we were charging back to the top of the mountain to relocate him. For the next hour, we peeked into every nook and cranny possible. We were starting to believe he'd given us the slip yet again. There he was, nose to the ground, scent checking a well-used game trail. Get up. Hit him again. Okay, hit him again, hit him again, hit him again. You're gonna have one more shot. Okay, put one more in him. Let's try to anchor him right there. Oh, he's gonna roll. That might be... Okay. Might be a little bit disastrous there. We caught that sucker though. <laughs> uh, I, I hate judging them when they're close. It's hard to be yeah. objective. A lot of times they look smaller than what they are when you're close. Yeah. But I mean, he's a good bear. He's a mature boar. I'm in peace. Then. All right. Well, we'll go over there. He's definitely done. He's down. We we got a bear. We caught up to that bugger <laughs> somehow. On day two. Hey, uh, what, about six yeah, it's. We're gonna have a fiasco on our hands with this bear one way or another, but yeah. we'll. Uh, we did a lot of climbing today. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's go take a look, see what we got, man. We got her done. <laughs> I don't know how. <laughs> we're, we're, I was just about ready to say, well, we can go back to camp, but. We got like three chances on this bear. Yeah, well, we'll we'll see what we got. You know what I think we may do? We'll go down to him, get him in a position. We'll just come back, skin him tomorrow, pack him out tomorrow. Okay. You know, cause it's just, yeah. Let's go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much assuredly rolled all the way to the bottom. See his skid marks. He probably took a pretty good tumble there. And uh, we were waiting for him, figuring he was gonna follow that sow's track, but for whatever the reason, there was another sow towards the bay, kinda upwind of him, and kinda maybe, we were thinking that he maybe got her scent and then decided to go after her, and that may be very well what happened. And we were, I was just kinda contemplating whether we should just get off the mountain. We were doing more harm than good spreading our scent. Doing a little honest narration on the camera, and there he is on the ridge top. So we caught up to him. I'm not too proud to admit that in my 20 plus years of guiding, there's been a few instances of ground shrinkage. Every time it was either an animal that was very close when I judged it, or I simply didn't take enough time to study it as thoroughly as I should have. I was all but certain this was the same bear Lonnie and I had seen that morning, but I didn't want to make a mistake, especially so early in the hunt. As it turned out, it was indeed the same bear. I much prefer judging bears from a mile away. 
From a mile away, how big did I say he was? Nine and a half, pretty much what I figured. As we got closer, I'm like, yeah, he's gotta be at least nine. He's definitely nine and a half foot. And those big arms, he's got nine inch pads, so he's, he's gonna be over nine and a half. Yeah, he's got big back feet. Eight year old? Ah, uh, no, his teeth, he's over 10. They don't all get the dark, or the light colored claws. He's got big feet. Oh, that's over 10 inches. From the back to the top. Whatever the length of the back pad is, is the square of the bear. That's just kind of a general rule. He's a warrior. He's a pretty old bear. Yeah, that's a good pad. Unlike most animals in Alaska, you're not required to take the meat of a brown bear. The old saying, you are what you eat, is most certainly true. And brown bears are rotten fish. When you skin them, they smell like a rotten fish. And most certainly, when you fry them in a pan, they smell like rotten fish. I've never been hungry enough to eat one, but my hunters who have all agreed they taste like rotten fish. However, I have eaten grizzly bears from the interior that didn't have access to salmon. After weeks of eating nothing but freeze-dried food, I found them to be quite a delicacy. Tomorrow, it's gonna be a test. Yeah, that was a long day. A lot of climbing, a lot of monkeying around with that. Uh, it takes so much energy maneuvering that bear so steep in and out of there and it's shale. I mean, we were crawling out of there on our hands and knees. I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do. I think we're going to try to time it at low tide, walk all the way around and see if we can get up that that creek, but I'm not sure. Man, it's going to be pretty nasty. Maybe maybe it'll work. Hopefully. But so we're going to walk around at low tide, and try to walk up the creek, and if we can do that, then we'll come back down the creek. Climbing this ridge ain't gonna be no bowl of cherries, I assure you. Oh, I wish that sucker would have just stayed up on top and not kicked, but we, we just we didn't know how steep it was down there. We had no idea. So, so basically, we've got a this ridge. So camp's right over in here somewhere. This ridge, and the bear is way down at the bottom and it's steep, so we're gonna try to, tomorrow we're gonna come up the drainage over there. We're gonna wrap around it, it's got a steep wall, so the only way we'd possibly be able to do it is low tide and then come up, and then probably about two in the morning it'll probably be about low tide. This bear hunt, we're back there. compared to your sheep hunt, how's this bear hunt? We ain't done yet. <laughs> it's about the same as my doll hunt, I can tell you. <laughs> Yeah, well, good wind gusts must have whipped her up there pretty good. I don't know. Uh, she's going to be a challenge getting that bear back here, that's for sure. In all my years of guiding, this was as close as I've ever been to quitting a hunt. Eight months earlier, during sheep season, I developed foot pain, which months later led me to a podiatrist. He explained that my years of packing heavy loads without proper support were causing the arches in my feet to collapse. He prescribed for me hard cast orthotics. That's when the real trouble started. All the shock meant to be absorbed in my feet was now being absorbed in my ankles, knees, hips, and especially my back. In just a few weeks of wearing the orthotics, my back was constantly going into spasm. At this point in the hunt, I had huge blisters on the arches of my feet. The nerves in my back pulsated as if they were being electrocuted. Muscles in my legs that I never knew I had felt like they were twisted in knots. I had very little confidence that I would be able to pack Lonnie's bear hide out of that steep creek bed the next day. If you spend any time in the wilderness of Alaska, you will be faced with challenges. Those challenges teach you who you are, and they also mold you into someone new. 
One of the greatest blessings of pursuing my childhood dream of becoming an Alaska hunting guide is the fact that it has cemented my spiritual beliefs. I've heard it said, there's no atheists in foxholes. I've never fought in war, but I've been alone in the wilderness many times, pitted against circumstances I was certain I couldn't overcome in my own power. I can tell you with all certainty and without hesitation, I've had help from above on more than one such occasion. That night in camp, I was exhausted physically, but most of all, I was mentally empty. I was consumed with angst and worry that I wouldn't be able to pack that hide the next day. After eating a big meal, I drank a few bottles worth of electrolytes. There was nothing else I could do but lay down in my cot. I closed my eyes and recited Philippians 4.13 over and over and over until I fell asleep. I woke up 10 hours later and couldn't believe how good I felt. Whether it was the rest, the electrolytes, or the Lord who had his hand in it, I can't say that I'm certain. But I woke up that morning feeling fresh and energetic as ever. I threw my $700 orthotics in the trash, and off we went to retrieve Lonnie's bear. Morning after Lonnie's kill, we're heading around, kind of waiting for kind of a low tide. It's about quarter to 11, low tide's at one. Camp's right over there. Shot the bear over top here. So we're gonna loop around, try to anyway. We're hoping we can then go around, come up that drainage, skin the bear out. When we come back out, low tide's not till 2 a.m. So we're not sure what we're gonna do there, but we're just gonna kinda take it as it comes. Around the bend. Might have been the ones we saw yesterday, maybe. Yeah, they, I think they were just to the right. We yeah. saw a couple bears right over in here. Lonnie's got the right foot gear. I don't. Cruising on up the creek. Not as easy a going as I had hoped. Pretty tough to scale these banks. Quite as bad as what it could have been, I guess. Yeah, to try to fight through this jungle, it's brutal. You got all these limbs, especially with a heavy pack, so. We wanted to come up this way and just see if, you know, what it was gonna be like. It was nice walking to the creek, but as soon as we got to the creek, that all stopped. Well, the trek up the creek was no peach. <clears throat> So I think when we go out, we're gonna wrap around that rim rock somehow. The bear's still here. Pretty big job to do still. He's kinda tucked in a little bit of a hold, but skinned him out and worse. So we just finished eating a little bit. About one o'clock. I'm gonna start carving on him, get him skinned out, get him back to camp some way, shape, or form. When we go on the backside, we got a big bluff. I don't know, we'll lower it down or throw the pack over the edge. I'm not sure yet, but we'll figure something out. It's just, it's a uh, real loose rock. It's just, yeah, this with a 100 pound plus pack. There's really no way to get it out of here. So, um, not too far. It's only probably a mile and a half back to camp, but it's gonna be a tough mile and a half. Despite the fact we don't have to pack out the meat, just dealing with such a large animal is no small chore, particularly when you find yourself in a sharp, narrow creek bed such as Lonnie and I were in. Well, we got her patched up, skinned out, and it's gonna be heavy. My back was tight, but my legs felt strong. After Lonnie helped me to my feet, I cinched my waist belt as tight as I could. My pack was over 120 pounds, but I was confident I could make it. At one point, we were clambering up a steep, muddy face. We were literally bear crawling, grasping for alder limbs, pulling and clawing ourselves up the mountain. It took every ounce of strength we had, but we made it through. 
Grateful the worst was behind us, we neared the crest of the ridge and enjoyed a breather. Told Lonnie we just gave new definition to the term bear crawl. <laughs> He's gone any, anywhere I asked him to, no problem, but this one he kind of he kind of <laughs> raised an eyebrow. <laughs> yeah. That nine foot bear is getting to closer and closer to that 10 foot thing and it's a water log, so it's probably weighing about 135 pounds right now. Uh, yeah, it wasn't much fun, but hopefully I'm gonna just fight some alders. Any major steep climbing is done. We got a major descend, but yeah. we'll deal with that when we come to it, I reckon. It's a beautiful day. Mountaineering channels. You even got the battle scar to prove it. We're home free now. We made her to the beach. Squared him out. 10 1. He is a bruiser. Skull's definitely over 28. For the first time, you can see the snowy peaks here. Pretty spectacular canyon. Looks a lot bigger when you the clouds are up and you can see everything. Yeah, it was a this is such a steep country to be shooting a bear in. It was it was one of the tougher hunts I've had and tougher bear hunts I've had in a long, long time, that's for sure. So the plan is uh, seven o'clock. Get some supper going, call in. Weather's supposed to be good tomorrow as far as I know, so Lonnie will probably get out of here pretty lickety split. But yeah, that bear's got a beautiful hide, absolutely flawless. Pulled that sucker out of the bag. She's still draining a lot of water, but excellent hide. Nice long hair, no rubs. Face is scarred up from fighting and from falling, but it's a pretty good bear. Big old melon on him. Well, I'm Lonnie from uh, Muscatine, Iowa and I've been hunting with Billy Moles. Uh, this is the fourth day at camp, or actually the fifth day. We got the bear two days ago. Today's Friday the 13th, and uh, the weather is starting to clear. It's about 10 in the morning, and we've got a really nice bear, uh, just uh, squared a little bit over 10 foot. And uh, Matt, our pilot, came in and got the bear, uh, bear skin and skull yesterday. And since I was a teenage kid back in Missouri, I uh, always dreamed of those big brown bears uh, on Kodiak in the coastal area. So yeah, it was a good hunt and uh, looking forward to get back to uh, Iowa and back home to my wife and kids and grandkids. I'm in my mid 60s, but still, uh, have enough uh, physical ability to get up and down these mountains and uh, I've had a little bit of knee problems but uh, it really hasn't bothered me on this hunt. Thanks, a big thanks to Billy and, and especially his family that uh, he's away from and uh, Billy's a great guide and knows bear hunting uh, very well, very well and uh, Perhaps someday uh, get a chance to hunt with Billy again, uh, either for moose or maybe uh, doll sheep up in the Brooks Range. That would be a, a fun hunt. Day five. Yes, fourth day of hunting season. I guess we've been here six days now. This was a good one. Got a good bear, definitely uh, over 28 inch skull, be pushing 29. Uh, it was a fantastic bear, no doubt about it. Saw him up on the hill, I didn't think he'd probably, I figured he was over nine and a half, didn't think he'd quite make 10, but as it turns out, sure did. Just a little over 10 foot, 10-1. A great hunt, it was a lot of fun hunting with Lonnie, real, real nice guy, soft-spoken gentleman, and yeah, enjoyed hunting with him. He's in very good shape. Yeah, not every hunter could have made that stock, that's for sure, in, in the pack out good help skinning the bear which needed in that brick bottom. Uh, yeah. <laughs>
These are all service pilots. Yep, Perfect. pilots, they'll have about an inch and a half of dirt on the floor of their house, but there's not one grain of sand in their airplane. That's right. <laughs> house don't make me any money. <laughs> so now from there, you need to jump head first into the airplane. Come on now, grab me right around the shoulder. Okay. Okay, you can grab, uh, now, this stuff for a now you're going to have him bleaching tarps when he gets into town. Oh, I get a lot of work lined up for him when he gets back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're good. A little bit on the front. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, here I got a wet wipe if you want to finish yeah, it up, finish the job. I should do that. <laughs> All right, get in there. All right. Oh man, I'm getting too old for that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks again, Lonnie. You Thank take you. care. We'll be in touch. Good luck on your uh, next hunt. Thank you. Get another 10 footer. Yeah, we'll see. Got a little bit of a quartering wind here. He's gonna get a full run at her. Firewall, 180 horses. Tail came up. Still fly. Off into the sunset. Get back to my book. Nurse the old legs and the feet. And then hopefully my next hunter is not due to come in. Rob Mullins from Illinois. No brother good in law of mine from Illinois. If you've ever heard the Turdy Point Buck, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, He's scheduled to come in, I think, on the 21st, so we've got the 14th today. So he's gonna try to change his ticket and get on in here because the big bears are on the move, weather's good, so hopefully we can get him in a couple of days, keep an eye out for bears, and get him in here and get hunt number two underway. That'd be pretty sweet. Beautiful day in the wilderness of Alaska. The eagles are frolicking, loving life. You got about a thousand pound feed bag over the hill. I found this washed up on the beach. I'm pretty, it's a bow and I'm pretty sure it's a bear usik. Which for those of you who aren't educated in such fancy terminology, genitalia of a male brown bear. Right length, looks about the right shape. Check it out, everybody should have one in their collection, I figure. I can give that to my kids, I can bring that to school, bring it to show and tell, while they're fellow students and teachers alike, I'm sure. The longer I guide, the more I appreciate tent time by myself. It's my escape from the endless and often maddening demands of the modern world. I use it as a time to relax and reflect. It gives me perspective, who I am, who I'm becoming, and what is truly important in life. It offers me a chance to call home to reconnect with my family. In my alone time, I also enjoy just sitting back watching nature. During this hunt, I watched a group of seals swim in circles to confuse the bait fish they were feeding on. It was fascinating to see various birds recognize what the seals were doing and watch as they swooped in for their own easy meal as the fish jumped into the air. When you see nature in its rawest form, you start to learn from it and you soon realize you could spend a thousand lifetimes and still never come close to grasping all it has to teach. The longer I do this, the more convinced I am that hunting is not defined or summarized by record books. 
I believe hunting is better described as an ever-changing understanding of wildlife and the lands in which they live. It's man's privilege to utilize everything in nature, and it's also our responsibility to protect it for the future. That is perhaps the hunter's ultimate challenge, as well as his ultimate reward. We figure the two boys are screwing off and mom and the daughter are probably working for a living. Rob Mullins from Illinois. Oh, you had a little more breeze up here on top. Yeah. Howdy, Rob. Hey, Well, you could use Rob's knees as elbow rests there. I was. <laughs> I, think, I think it's other one. Okay. All right. Seasoned pro. <laughs> hey, good to meet you, Rob. Good to meet you, sir. Good yeah, you. It's, been a, it's been a while. Yeah. Communication, exactly. and here we are. <laughs> so, well... Enjoy this nice weather, Rob. It's about over with, ain't it? Well, <laughs> nice weather up here usually just makes a guy nervous. <laughs> like Lonnie, this was the first time hunting together for Rob and I. Rob was a laugh a minute. He and I hit it off right away. Got some lift to it. <laughs> yeah, and I, <laughs> my might saved Emily some laundry. The fact that we pushed him back, he might have had to hop her over the <laughs> the creek there. If I had my ear to ground, I'd call him. Yeah, it was a, I wonder if there was a little extra bounce there than what he expected. <laughs> so Rob Mullins from Illinois, looking yeah, for a big bear, huh? I heard you got one tied up out here. Yeah, we did. Darn thing chewed the rope off. Oh, we got man. a bait pile up on the hill, Rob. <laughs> if you want to check it out, we got one in the scope. Really? Yeah. It ain't the one you traveled 3,000 miles to shoot, but it might lure him in. All right. You got a fuzzy little lady. Just underneath that rocky peak. Uh -huh. Oh, blondie. Rob knows more about the Stone Glacier backpack than I do, which probably isn't saying much. I've used it a lot, but I just kind of, I'm just telling him how I, it's like, yeah, I just throw stuff in holes and then I just throw it on and go. I don't, I don't have the patience to learn where things go and how they work. Right. Works pretty good. Why don't you figure it out? I know that thing is lightweight. And it's comfortable with a heavy load. My story is I'm not stupid, I'm just uh, lazy and impatient. I, I could figure it out, but uh, I just don't have the uh, stick to itiveness required. I just like insert here, put a bag in, a couple of pockets, and then pull it and go. That pretty much, that's how I roll. <laughs> What'd you bring for a rifle, anyways? My Lapua. Okay, it was a three... Three Lapua. Okay, yeah. A 300 Magnum is adequate for an interior grizzly, but I consider an absolute minimum for coastal bears. I like to see at least a 338, but I prefer a 375 H&H or something comparable. That said, having a large caliber rifle is worthless if you're unfamiliar with it or scared to shoot it. One outfitter I used to guide for would say, a hunter's job is to kill the bear at 100 yards. The guide's job is to kill it at 10 feet. You don't need a brand new 500 nitro double rifle to kill a brown bear. If in doubt, opt for the rifle you shoot well and are most comfortable with. For ammunition, I use Barnes TSX. I've also seen good results with Nosler Partition and Swift A-Frame. 
A heavy, durable bullet is critical. See how heavy it is? It's not too bad. It's a little, huh? I mean, it's, it's what, a gun. 10, 10 pounds, 11? I never weighed it. Huh? Nice scope, that's a perfect scope, one to six. That's, yeah. you don't want too high a power for bear hunting, that's good. Very rarely do I allow a client to shoot a bear beyond 200 yards. A quality, low magnification, variable power scope is ideal. This is zero in in there, checking Rob's rifle. We got two small bears, I don't know if it's a young boar and a sow. Nothing worth running over there for anyway. Rifle's still on, so we're ready to go bear hunting in the morning. Well, I think this is, yeah, who knows, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's the sow and two cubs that Lonnie and I boogered off about four days ago now, so it's good to see them moving back into the country. It's been pretty slim pickings. Went about two days and didn't see a single bear. So when our cubs are way up high in the shale rock, they're flipping these rocks over, must be eating some moss or insects of some sort. Been feeding up there for a pretty good while. Very opportunistic animal. Every, uh, all these different seasons are taking advantage of whatever food source they can find. You took a little effort off. This guy is hardcore. Hardcore coffee drinker. <laughs> yeah, coffee. He brings his own jet boil. He's a regular barista, <laughs> which I don't mind. We've seen a sow and two cubs, same one we saw late last night, I'm assuming. On hot days like these, bears typically find a cool spot to rest. Most of the activity will be in the evenings, throughout the night, and during the early morning hours. It would have been pretty slow for bear activity. It was just too warm. Sow and two cubs that we saw prancing around in the snow up here earlier today, they moved off, so we haven't seen anything since late morning. And don't expect uh, probably much movement till close to dark. It's still pretty warm. Morning of day two. We're eyeballing a pretty good bear. Looks like a boar. I think it's a bear we saw in the last hunt. I haven't seen him for about seven or eight days now. Got a little bit of a limp to him, I think. Not very distinguishable there, but I know when he'd hit rocks before, he'd limp pretty good. Well, here's the, the goatee bear we saw earlier this morning, cruising through the snow. About 7.30 in the morning. Presumably, probably a sow went through there, he's just following those tracks. He might just be using the, those other tracks for ease of travel, but he's up in the high country, which as hot as it's been getting in the middle of the days here the last five or six days, I guess that's probably where I'd be if I were him too. So the two other two big bears we saw in the last hunt, they both appear on the same day, right in the same general area. With his old rival long since devoured by eagles, Blondie felt safe enough to come back into the country. It took Rob just one look through the spotting scope. If we get a crack at that one, can't pass him up. You got it, brother. See how square his head is and just kind of blocky and... So there's really not much for us to do at this point because he's walking faster than us. So we're just going to sit and watch and maybe we'll get lucky and see where he beds. Well, kind of looking like this big old blonde-eared bruiser. He's been steadily working his way away from us from left to right. Like he's going to head over the pass, but they can certainly cover lots of country, so maybe he'll be working back around here in the next day or two. One afternoon, I noticed eagles hovering above a distant knoll. 
Looking below them, I saw something white moving in the brush. I figured it was the same caribou cow I saw in that area hours earlier. As the eagles circled lower and lower, all of a sudden, here comes the cow bursting out of the brush with an hours old, gangly legged calf behind her, doing everything it could to keep up. As soon as the caribou started moving, the eagles gave up their pursuit. There's a big old bruiser. Saw him on the first hunt too. This is a big bear. Here's this big old bruiser again. It's cruising along the wind, the ridge, scent checking. Just catching the up, uphill thermal. Trying to smell if there's any sows down beneath him. Oh, that's a big bear there, it's like a big boar. This is why these boars run the ridges. They just get up there and smell. They let their noses do the walking. He's just sitting there for probably a minute, just sniffing into the wind. Are we having fun yet? Having fun now. You betcha. Absolutely. She's uh, consistent on the precipitation, if nothing less. But wind's not too bad. It's kind of blowing in a little bit at us, but we are surviving. No bears so far. Aren't you glad if we got got up? Aren't, we, aren't you glad we got up nice and early this morning? We got a great start of the day. <laughs> this awesome. Wonder if they're just coming down for the salt. Mm, yeah. About time you got here. Hey now. Been up here for four hours. And my yeah. hunter's been in there sleeping, bathing. That's a lie. You know it. Calling his Hi. girlfriend. I got you up this morning to get out and get some hunting. Now. Spotted four bears. <laughs> you know the truth of that. <laughs> yes, we do. So it's day four, and it's you know, it's warm today, though. It's a lot warmer. The wind's not really blowing. Nobody's hunting harder on the Alaska Peninsula than we are. At least not in this valley. They're scared of us. What's on the menu today? Mac and cheese, my friend. The chef whipped me up some mac and cheese. Probably a little cider to go along with that. Tell you in about eight to eight nine, nine minutes. minutes. Carefully, do everything yes. carefully. 3.30, day four. No bears yet today. Had a little break from the wind, ceiling lifted, then the wind switched out of the northwest, so. Turn the tarp, she's starting to gust pretty good, probably 25. Still raining as you can hear. So yeah, we're just gonna stick it out. Patience, patience is the name of the game. We got a boar following a sow. We can see the sow right now. Boar's on her tail. We've been studying him, it's been raining pretty hard. Here he's stepping out. Got a little bit of a rub on his shoulders. I think this might be the same boar we saw a few days ago. So we still got 10, 11 days to go, so I think we might let him walk. Rob and I are sitting here in the rain and the wind, wondering if we know anybody that we hunt with back home would actually enjoy this. <laughs> our wives, we, we know our wives wouldn't. They'd probably, they'd, they, they would have shot us if it weren't for probably fear of bears. Yeah, exactly. Nobody <laughs> uh, in their right mind <laughs> be out here with us. Pushing nine o'clock in the evening, so we're getting close to wrapping her up for the day. Getting to be kind of a boar's nest in here, but we're eating good. Chicken and quinoa and rice. <laughs> what do you think of the quinoa, Rob? It's quite, quite excellent. Hard to pass up bird seed. <laughs> <laughs> we're a couple more days, and then we're 
eating out of a bag, freeze dried. Yeah, definitely not a very big bear. I guess we better quit sipping coffee and get out there and start hunting, huh? What a difference a day makes. Gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, we got a good low tide in the morning. Just so the viewers know, it's getting daylight about 5.45ish and then dark about 11.30, so there's no hunting daylight till dark, particularly when it's raining on you all day, but so yeah, usually we'll get up a little later and then hunt late. But, so yeah, especially when you get weather like today, we'll hunt long hours. So yeah, it's good to have a bear moving through nonetheless. If it hopefully it was a, especially if it was a young sow, that's kind of ideal having that scent trail going through camp. Morning of day five. You can see the sow in the center of the screen. The boar is right next to her in the bushes there somewhere, but it's a good boar we've seen a few times. Below him? Above her. Above her? Just a little bit looking at us, turn back. Oh yeah? Yeah, yeah. He's just a little bit out of our hunting area. He's about two miles away. This is the blonde eared bear that we've, I guess I've saw him at least two different times on the first hunt, and we saw him four days ago. So he's holed up with a sow. If they were in our hunting area, I'd probably go after him, but that is a pretty long pull just from the simple fact that a lot of times they'll move, but they, they'll kind of get down in lockdown sometimes too, where they'll They'll hang for days in an area, especially if a sow knows she's got a mature bear or a dominant bear, which this one very likely is. He's a big, big boar. I'm gonna get a little coffee going. Watch it. We're living the high life today. Got some decent weather. Good bear, bear killing day. What's up? The new bear lounger that brought him in. Yeah, it is oh, kind of a fancy. thing of beauty. Yeah, this bear hunting, it's a heck of a lot nicer when you're not <laughs> ducked under a tarp and <laughs> watching the rain hit you, leak through the tarp, smack you on the nose. Rob finally spotted a bear when it came in to investigate him doing the call of nature. Actually, he came up from the beach and there was a bear cruising in, said I was looking right at the tent when Bob pop, or, uh, Rob popped Bob. <laughs> Delete that. Let's get that in. <laughs> Rob popped over the the edge, <laughs> and then the bear bear saw him, and of course ran away. <laughs> Bears are up on their feet, heading the wrong way. But maybe they'll follow the contour and do the old loop de loo and come right on in. But yeah, there that bear you can see a pretty big size difference between the, the boar and the sow. Yeah, yeah, they seem to be sticking pretty tight. A lot of times when you see them, the sow wants nothing to do with the boar, and but I figure this is a big mature boar. She knows it, possibly even the dominant boar around here, so she's probably gonna allow him to suit her. Yeah, sometimes you'll see boars and sows like this, they'll just hang together for days, maybe, maybe even a week. And a lot of times they'll just kind of lounge in the same area if nobody bothers them. So there's plenty of green, plenty of feed around, so I think this is the same bear that came to visit Rob out on the latrine. Young bear, maybe even a kick out cub, if not just a four year old, really young, young bear. But yeah, real, you can see how it's real fluffy, shiny, kind of skinny. Just a young bear. Guide start whistling patience to us. Yeah, keep us in track. Well, guns yeah, and it's roses. Been exciting. Really great, great, great trip so far. About everything I expected. It's not that physical demanding yet, but I'm sure part of it will be. Let us sit around and wait and be ready to go. Kind of getting a treat here, having the ability to watch our bear for a while, get a little on the film, and maybe get mentally prepared for the hunt, the kill, I should say, not the hunt, the kill. And hopefully it'll take place. But I'm sure we get real close to him, it will get more exciting by the second. Hopefully we make a good kill, a good shot. 
it's a challenge and then and not getting discouraged and having the, the upbeat. But it's short, what, five days into it? This is our fifth day, Billy? Yep, fifth and, hunting uh, fifth day. Fifth yep. day of hunting, I think six day in camp, is that right? Yep. Yeah. So, um, you know, luckily we've seen some great bears. I mean, if we haven't seen much for, for quality, it would have been kind of more discouraging. But Yeah, Rob is, you know, what he's alluding to, it's absolutely right. You know, sometimes, like a lot of, a lot of hunters that come up here, like Rob, he's a business owner. They're used to kind of getting in there and getting things done. Well, particularly in bear hunting, that's some. That's a lot of times. That's the worst thing you can do. You know, your your guide. It's your guide. Well, any no matter what your hunting situation is, you're kind of you're measuring the um, measuring how patient you should be versus how aggressive you should be. Bear hunting. You, the last thing you want to do is spread your scent. So we're walking the beach. That's the only place we go, just to get up and move around, keep our scent controlled. You know, the tide water will wash our scent away and we stay close to camp. And so we're watching these bears and you know, we've been seeing a lot of big bears, but it's just such low percentage stocks. We've got to wait until they get into a position where, you know, then we can be aggressive to get a high percentage shot. So for a lot of guys, bear hunting is the toughest part of it is the mental challenge. Obviously the physical challenge can certainly come as it did on my last hunt where we went up on the top of these mountains to get this bear. It was very physically challenging, but you got to get them in the right position and you know before you go stinking up that country. So it's it's a mental grind. Bear hunting is challenging mentally probably more so than physically. And so you got to just endure the weather. Some days the best thing you can do is just sit in the tent, you know, stay hydrated, remain positive, just be patient. 6.30, day five, a big boar in the sow. They were holed up for about seven, seven, eight hours. They finally got back up on their feet. They're still outside the hunting area. And by five, six hundred yards probably. About 100, maybe 200 yards beyond that pinnacle to the right is the border, is the line there. We can go either direction side to side, but we can't go very deep up this valley. It's getting to be a little bit like Groundhog Day. Day six. We actually spotted a small bear in the fog an hour or two ago. It wasn't a big bear, it was looking back. I think there was something following it, and then all of a sudden the clouds swallowed her up. And... The old adage is, bear hunting is 99% boredom and 1% sheer terror. Rob was getting a healthy dose of the 99%. Tarp's holding water for the most part, so we're dry anyway. But given the bears we were seeing, I was confident sooner or later our opportunity would come. We got a sow with a couple of cubs. Embedded up on this rocky point. I think that's the cubs in the, up on the rocks right now. We saw her yesterday right in that little shale slide in the fog. and We saw her looking down. We were thinking there might have been a boar with her, but never saw her again. She must have laid in the bush. But it just appears that it's a sow with a couple cubs. So day seven, that's all we've seen so far. Nine in the morning. Waiting. There's not many people in this day and age that are good at it. As a guide, that's perhaps the biggest challenge I face in trying to get a hunter a mature bear. Rob was willing to hunt to the bitter end in search of a mature boar. The longer I guide, the more I appreciate hunters who have their sights set on a particular class of animal and won't lower their standards, even if it means going home empty-handed.
solid nine foot bear. Limping pretty bad, so he's pretty easy to distinguish. He's got a little bit of a goatee. This real long skinny leg. He's got long white claws, pretty good indicator he's 10 years old and he might be a little bit older of a bear than we think. Just that limp, he might be a little bit thinner than what he ordinarily would be. Day seven. This boar and sow that we saw, well we first saw him two days ago, the boar's on the right. We've seen him a few different times, blonde ears. They've been bedded up, we saw him earlier this morning, they've been holed up. They're about five, six hundred yards, maybe a half mile outside of our hunting area. They've been hanging right in this area. Now today they started moving. She's just kind of side hilling along and he seems to be getting underneath her and trying to push her up higher. I suppose drive her out up up where he doesn't have to worry about anybody else catching their scent and trying to steal her from him. So he's trying to push her up into that stuff. Not much we can do about it. See there she gets up and goes and there he gets up and goes. So he doesn't want her to go left so he's always trying to head her off and push her up. Either up or back to the right. Kind of, kind of neat to watch. This one we call Gimpy, he limps pretty bad. He's been kind of loosely following their trail for the last couple hours. He's just kind of feeding along, and but he's pretty well following right where they went. This bear I don't think is anywhere near the bear that has the sow now. Pretty nice when we get some nice weather and you start seeing some bears and get some activity. What have, what have we seen today? So we had the sow and sows and cubs. Both sides. Yep, sows and cubs both sides of the valley. We saw the boar and the sow together, saw a gimpy, and then we saw another small bear sow maybe behind us just for a little bit, which we think is Rob's outhouse buddy. There you go. 10 30 p.m. The end of day seven, so hunt's half over with. It's only a 10 day hunt, but. Rob got in four days early, he called ahead, found out Lonnie was done, so he got up here early, so he gets some extra days, so that's good. But yeah, we saw a lot of bears today, saw more bears today than we have in the previous six days. That's pretty typical with bear hunting, you get the right conditions, you see bears right now, uh, pretty much an hour before dark, it's still pretty warm out, be a good bear activity night tonight. So we could definitely have some new bears in this valley in the morning. We're thinking about going at low tide around noon tomorrow and walk around the horn and see how far out we can get out in one of these spits and glass up into some of these valleys. So yeah, it's good. Bears are really moving. The alders are getting a lot of buds, leaves already, so a lot harder to see in the bush, but Bears are definitely moving, they're rubbing more. Wouldn't you say, Rob, we probably saw more bears today than we did the previous six days. Yeah, they're moving. You're getting the old red face from the wind, am I getting it too? <laughs> a little bit. I noticed it today, a little bit of sun, a little bit of wind. Rosy cheeks. Yeah, yeah. beautiful, yeah. it's warm tonight, isn't it? It's gorgeous. Surprising how the sun went down and didn't really cool down. Well, we've got blonde ears up on the hill with the sow. We were hoping he'd side hill this way and sure enough, old boar spotter Rob. But yeah, he's sure corralling her. So they moved. 865. 865 yards away. It's eight o'clock. So we're gonna wait on the thermals. We'll watch them, just kind of see what they do, because they'll probably bed down here at some point. So they were over there yesterday. We lost sight of them there last night. We were hoping to catch them in here today, and sure enough, there they are. We are kind of figuring they were grading around that we'd catch them here eventually, and they're here now. Been playing a lot of cat and mouse. So 
I'll probably watch them for a little while, just kind of see what they do. Right now the thermals are coming down. And we relocated these bears about an hour ago. Thermals have just switched in the last couple minutes. We're watching a really young boar. He's going into the bushes right where we last saw, right where we last saw him. So now the thermals are switched. We're pretty right much there, right there, right up, uh, yeah. a little young boar, yeah, to the left, yeah. This is where things get <laughs> kind of crazy because when as soon as we go and try to do our ascent because we're going to go farther up the valley which will now the thermals have switched be downwind i'm planning on going up through here grab some water work up the creek switch over to this face that way we can kind of watch see if they come get over the top and then run the ridge and we got to try to relocate them so as we this is where it gets kind of difficult and you need some luck is uh, when we get up on the mountain and start ascending we're, we're gonna have no idea what they're doing so Good hot days like this, oftentimes some bears they'll they'll bed and they'll just hole up, usually in the bush where you can't see them, they're in the shade. But now we got this little boar right in amongst this big boar in the sow. Now right, we got big daddy on the left, sow in the middle, the other boar on the right. This wasn't really in our plans. But that's the kind of crap that happens and makes bear hunting challenging. He's a brood, ain't he? <laughs> Can't tell which one's the big one. <laughs> I think you can. I think you can. Unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty spectacular. Either that or they're ultra small. <laughs> yeah, it's even just looking at him, he's, he's a 10 foot bear. Like I said, this could change everything, and it changed everything in a, in a big okay. hurry. <laughs> now come down. Everybody. Yeah, I mean, there, there was probably, you know, the sun's coming up now. It's starting to get hot. If he wouldn't have boogered them, there was a really good chance that they'd have just stayed right in that area all day. So now they went over that edge. Yeah, we got no clue what's, what's, what's what. Well, they're back. It's like they got rid of Junior. I don't know, they're going back over. And about four or five minutes after they went over, they popped back over. Junior didn't follow, that's probably good. They're more likely if they don't have a third wheel involved that they'll stay put a little more probably. Rob and I are just laughing about the highs and lows of big game hunting in Alaska. It's like, there he is, he's coming back over. So comes, the boar comes, they're back over on this side for about two seconds, they turn right around and go back. Get the camera fired up, they're done. We're sitting here just getting ready to go. Look up on the ridge top, there's another bear coming right over the skyline. We figured it was maybe the sow. We're like, oh, it looks like a big bear. And it is a big bear, it's another big boar. I think this might be the one we called Scarface that we saw a few times. He's got a little bit of like a triangle rub on his forehead, so he's going to sniff them out. And there again, there's going to be all kinds of stuff taking place up there today, but we just need to get our butts up there. So When it rains, it pours, eh, brother? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. We're going to study him and see what we think in case we get a crack at him first, which is probably the way it'll go down. <laughs> A big old fat, waddly, waddly slow, massive walk. So as it stands right now, I think we get a crack at either one of those bears. Probably going to take them. I mean, it's until you see them side by side, it's hard to tell. They're both big, mature bears. Scarface soon sniffed out a scent trail that led him out of the country. From that point on, our sole focus was on Blondie. Working up the creek bottom. Before we leave this, we're gonna fill up with water, drink some water, take a little break, strip down, get everything readjusted. Work, get up there as fast as we can, and then we'll take our time. A little war wound. And, ah, bear hunting, love it. Alders and loose shale. 
or a hunter's enemy. It can eat up energy. I say hunter's worst enemy or energy. It'll eat up your energy really fast. When you take a step, dig in and you go down. We're definitely uh, gaining some serious elevation. I think it'll be the, it'll be better footing once we get up here. I know there's some terraces and trails. The camp and the glass and knobs just around the corner. Getting up above the brush line now. Tent right down there. Thermals are coming pretty much straight in their face. So we think the bear is about. We last saw him seven, eight hundred yards. We still got a ways to go up. But we're gonna get over this ridge where we can at least see in case they come this way, but we're gonna get up on that ridge line. We don't know which side he'll be on. Hope we can find him. Chances are pretty good they're bedded. So yeah, we'll need some luck, but we got good weather. Bear bed. We're gonna sit here and watch, take a little break, and then we're gonna scoot up and get on that, this ridge. Right over here where Lonnie shot his bear. Almost made her, boss. Mountain's pretty darn steep. There's a nice seat for you, nice and flat and soft. I'm thinking of you. Remember, the bear, wait till I tell you to shoot. It takes me a little while to get this thing rolling, for one thing. But yeah, just make sure the first one, kill him with the first shot, done deal. Right here is where we shot Lonnie's bear. And it rolled down into that bottom right there. All up in here. They're not in there. I think he's right over here. A little bit of rusty rust in that fancy new chamber. That salt water stuff on it. Safety is the most important aspect of my job. At no time are chambers loaded until we close in on an animal. I'm far more nervous of a loaded rifle than I am of bears. Up. Cam's right down there. So we worked around. Came around that face. I gotta be careful so I don't fall over. So we worked up here. Where we last saw the bears was right over here. So it's kind of shady and wet over this rocky hump. So I'm expecting that that's where they're gonna bed for the afternoon. There's a little bear down there. Uh, that's all we saw. I don't think it was the sow. So that's a good, it kind of tells me there's a good chance that that boar and sow is there and that little bear may be working around them. You never know, but. Yeah, it's not ideal, but we're in a, we're in a pretty good position. 1.30, so blow flies are out. Been waiting for him down there for four days. Right in there is our glass and hole. Where he's been most of the time is up in that country. And then last night, we kind of circled around. We were hoping to find him over here. And sure enough, there's a wolverine trying to dig out a ground squirrel. Some dirt flying. seen as a tail. Don't have the scope on. It's gotta be a wolverine. Now you got him. Rob and I scoured all the same country that Lonnie and I did. I was sure they were holed up in a shady draw somewhere. So we found a good vantage point and just sat down to wait, hoping once it cooled down that evening, we'd catch them up on their feet. 
though they were a lot farther away than we imagined. Ten hours after we last saw them, our patience paid off. 700 yards away. 77. Ouch. Pretty far. Got a tall order. Play it by ear, he was down in this. We, we had no idea where he was. We were hoping he'd work his way up, but obviously they didn't. So. That's a bummer. You can keep going down if you want. 520. We're gonna try scooting down there, scooting over, try shooting cross canyon. Quarter to eight, so it's getting pretty late, but this is our chance. We're gonna go for it. He's still there. 280 yards. I get in position. Here, do you want to get, get your back up there? Then you're a little higher. Let me check the range. Two fifty. Two fifty. Yeah, then we're gonna wait till they totally separate for sure. All right, you gotta kill him on the first shot. So we'll slip it right tight. We're gonna want a long shot. Okay, so just like you're killing anything else. You zoomed up all the way? Yes, sir. Okay. We want a nice clear shot, no brush in the way. No other bear in the way. You must have brush in the way. Okay, get ready. Just wait for him to stop. Gotta get a nice broadside shot. This is looking at me, isn't it? Yep. Yep, he's the only one that you can see. There's much debate on shot placement on bears, namely whether to aim for the front shoulder or farther back in the center of the lungs. I've found hunters have a tendency to shoot high, particularly when the animal is in tall brush and the hunters can't see the bottom of the animal. In most cases, I like my clients to aim very tight or even slightly forward of the shoulder crease of a broadside bear. When the hunters who have followed this protocol have shot high, they've always hit at least the spine or scapula. And in those instances, the bears have went down and we were always able to quickly kill the bear with follow-up shots. Okay, he's moving. All right, get ready. Try to turn him broadside. Don't, don't take it unless he's perfectly broadside. I do like a lung shot in certain cases, but if you shoot high, there's a greater risk of shooting over the lungs and under the spine, which is rarely lethal. And most likely the bear will not go down, but rather he'll take off and run, making for a difficult second shot. In this case, the shot was farther than most, with the bear standing in short vegetation and thick alders all around him that would make a second shot questionable, I instructed Rob to aim a bit farther back for the center of the lungs to maximize his vital target area. Each circumstance is slightly different. What I'm offering is merely my opinion based on my experience. If you wound a bear, it's your guide's neck the bear is going to try to scratch, not mine. So a hunter should always listen to his guide and follow his instructions. Okay. All right, this way. He's facing you. No longer impressed by his lady friend, Blondie decided he wanted to relax and take a nap. This was a perfect opportunity for us to move in closer. Unless it's absolutely necessary, never shoot at a bedded bear. The vitals are compacted, 
and it can be very difficult to tell where those vitals are in relation to the body. Okay, now he's definitely laying down. If I squeal, there's a pretty good chance he'll get up and look. I don't think he's just going to get up and run away. It's up to you if you want to play it that way. Well, here's what I figure. Probably as good a chance that probably a better chance that he's just going to get up and walk away after the sow rather than a squeal. You know what I'm saying? Hunters are constantly faced with decisions. I've found the longer you wait for an animal to do something, the less likely it is they will comply. Taking action is risky, but the risk of inaction is often greater. In this case, I felt aggressive action offered our best chance at a high percentage shot. You good? Solid? Steady? Oh, yeah. Try a squeal? Tell me if you're good. Are you feeling it? Mm -hmm. Smoke them whenever you're ready. Hit him again. He's dead. Hit him again. He's smoked. Yeah, he's. Boy, that sucker's still moving. He's, look at all that pollen. He's hurting, there's no doubt about that. Look at all that pollen dust. Mm -hmm. Dude. Just a little left over there. We got our bear. <laughs> what have we been chasing? He was pretty He was pretty much broadside, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much yeah, broadside. Yeah, smoked him pretty good. Tried to put him in the crease. If anything, I got a little more shoulder than the crease, but it was right there. Looks like a big bear, dude. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he's, a, he's our bear no matter what. Yeah, so. he's what we pick. Yeah. Uh, we'll just sit here yet for a little bit and just kind of watch, see if we see him try to climb out. But we definitely heard him breathe in there. I mean, that's a pretty good sign he wasn't going very far, but. We got blonde ears, man. Nice. There you go, <laughs> good job. Nice shooting. Uh, that was a crazy deal. Well, here's where we were sitting all day. Yeah. Right up there. We, we figured he was he was bedded in here and we were kind of waiting for him to wrap around either way. So, and then when we spotted him down here, I was like, well, I figured it was a long shot, but fortunately they were, they were breeding. Uh, I think when I popped over here, they were still breeding. So, I mean, they were breeding for 45 minutes. What time is it? Uh, 8.30. 8.30. This is a jungle. We're gonna load up. Mind, you mind if I just load up in the front? That's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tracking brown bears in dense tangled brush has a tendency to be more exciting than a Sunday morning stroll to the mailbox. Once we got to where the bear was first shot, Rob loaded his rifle and we cautiously took to the blood trail. Yep. Big 
bear. <sighs> yes, sir. Bear. Look at the melon on that thing. Oh yeah. He's yeah. got a wild old noggin on yeah, him, don't does. he? Yeah, he does. What a bear. What a bear, what an adventure. Some scars on his face and oh. those uh, blonde ears, that's uh, yeah, that's what we've been after. That's what stuck <laughs> out on him. <laughs> we've been after the blonde ears. Yeah, he's a good bear. Boy, massive old neck on him, big front shoulders. He passed on his jeans before we got here. Yeah, yeah, he got his. <laughs> He was tending that sow for three, four days. He got her done. <laughs> he, he was pretty lazy. He didn't want to get up there. For the first time, he wasn't dogging that sow. I mean, they were, how long were they breeding? Probably more or less 45 minutes. At least, at least. whatever it took us to get down there. I mean, at least they started and then we, we, I don't know how long it took us. It, good 45 minutes. Yeah, it was, that was like gonna be a long shot. It's so brushy in here. We were lucky that we had them in an opening. Yep, lucky they stayed there. Oh, uh, go! Can you pick up that head? Oh yeah, he's got a good melon. Oh yeah, that's a beast. How about that? Bro? I don't know, man. That's a big <laughs> skull. I don't know. It'll be interesting what that thing tapes out. It's big. <laughs> ah, look at that. Here we thought he was rubbing, and here he's just turning more blonde. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see on his other. His, yeah, his other side. We were thinking it just. I, I think it was just kind of highlights, just blonde. It's beautiful, beautiful hide. Swing him back a little. Oh yeah, he's a little messy. That's a good pad. How wide do you think the pad is? Yeah. Right there, baby. It's pushing nine, I know that. Right, oh wow, yeah. Good pad. Yeah, he's a good bear. I'm gonna get his, check out his teeth. He's not... Uh, get the little white going on it. Yeah, he's pretty worn. He's not, uh, not super worn, but he's no young bear. He's gonna be probably 12 years old at least. Well, there's one good hit. Yeah. That's a perfect hit. Yeah, I got one good one in him. Eighth day. How long have we been on this one? Five, yeah, six, five, six, five days. Five, six days. Five days worth of watch on this dude. Yep, watched him, had a, had a sow with him. Finally got the sow taken care of tonight and we took care of our business. So we got our, uh, we've been following him for for quite a few days, set them being very patient. He got back in our range and finally this morning and uh, kind of came together for us. Got over where we can go after him. Set up all afternoon up on the high part of the, of the mountain and uh, he fooled us and came out the other side. But uh, we made a play on him and uh, he was busy breeding the, his uh, sow and we got him. There you can kind of see his length, not a very good, uh, uh, pose but obviously there's just not much we can do with him here but tried to horse him around he's just a little too big for us yeah he's gonna be uh yeah he's gonna be over nine and a half anyway he's got nine inch pads so he's uh, he's a good bear he's our bear he's the we saw one other bear that we were thinking is in the same class as this one maybe a little bigger maybe a little smaller we didn't know yep. uh, but we had so much history we're watching this bear he kind of had a had a spot in our hearts already so yeah, we decided this is the one we wanted to take we went after him we got him Pretty good stuff for a pretty good bear, a pretty good 10 footer maybe. We don't know. Can't yeah. Tell us later. Yeah, until we stretch him out, we won't know. But yeah, either way, he's a good bear. And Wonderful bear. You betcha. We're going to get some photos. What do we got? We got uh, time we'll do. 9.13, yeah, so we're gonna get out of here by 10. We should be able to make it back before dark and we'll have a lot of work tomorrow, but hey man, job's done. Congrats, Rob. Physical preparation not only increases success, but also safety. At this point, Rob and I were exhausted. Though it was more physically taxing, wherever we came to a slippery stretch in the creek, we opted to climb up and back down the steep alder infested hillside. It actually hasn't been terrible, but it's slick, it's hard rock. Like that stuff right there, kind of dangerous, but. Gotta be careful. Yeah. We were forced to do this countless times. It would have been much easier and faster to stay in the drainage, but the potential for injury on the slippery bedrock was much greater. When you're tired, it's easy to get lazy and take shortcuts. You simply cannot afford to let your guard down in the wilderness. 
So yeah, we gotta figure out when the tide is, uh, figure out how high it is, if we can get out of here, get up in here. So probably walk around this at low tide tomorrow, go skin the bear, and then go home, then come home at low tide again, or thereabouts, probably doesn't have to be low tide, but we'll just see what we got here today. It'll be a good test run. Oh, I don't wanna roll an ankle. It's gonna be really sweet coming out of here tomorrow with the bear hide. This could be bad enough going up. And, uh, yeah, well, we put on a long, we had a big climb today, so we'll be fresh. We'll eat good, drink good tonight, we'll be fresh. Track. On the homeward stretch. Trying to get out of the soft sand, maybe. We did her. We've been trying to get that whole blonde eared boar for a long time. Well, what are we doing today, Rob? Who's gonna go skin us a bear? Can you skin Grizz, Pilgrim? Going for a nice little trail walk today. Low oh. tide, we're kind of lazy today. We're six minutes behind schedule already, 107. <laughs> yeah, we're fine. It's low tide. So we're gonna go around this horn at low tide now. Uh, high, high tide or even mid tide, we can't get through. So now we're gonna go up the drainage, skin the bear. Try and we won't, <laughs> yeah, try to get out, uh, try to get it down, and then we're not going to be able to get back until low tide, which is about midnight tonight, so probably by 10 o'clock, 10.30, 11, somewhere in there we'll be able to sneak through. It's not a very uh, uh, low, low tide, so yeah, so that's our objective today. We got some cloud cover, which is nice. It'll keep it cool, and uh, yeah, just get back up there. Get to skinning, pack them out, and call the plane. Finish, finish your bottle of vodka, and call the plane. Yeah. It's a little sketchy with this bedrock here. It's so slippery. You need to get all these muscles to fire simultaneously. And in a different order or a different uh, it's not you're never making a standard movement going across rocks like this and climbing up hills you're grabbing brush you're using your arms your legs your back your stomach all at the same time all in a different way every single step of your whole entire trip an Alaska brown bear hunt is a heck of an adventure if you can handle it physically Brown bear hunting any fun? Absolutely. Hunting in down here. <laughs> Rob's hunted in Alaska a lot, and he and I have actually uh, kind of talked about the things to get ready physically. You can't just do it on squats and a bench press. No, there's a lot more to it. You got to get the full, full body workout. Fun to be wonderful. If you don't have prepared. You're going to be miserable the whole time. Yep. If, yeah. if you're prepared, it'll be the adventure of your lifetime. Marathon runners and weightlifters often have the toughest time when hunting in Alaska. It seems as though they are too one-dimensional. No two steps on your hunt will be alike. Being CrossFit is essential. Rob is six foot four, so he's a pretty big old boy, and he was quite handy to have around when it came to moving the bear in that wedged-in creek bottom. Look what you're working on. Yeah, I didn't know we were filming. Yeah. Oh, he's got big old feet. So they say that 
uh, the square of the bear is the length of the front pad. So when I really can stretch out my fingers there, I can get nine and a half. And I really stretch it out. What can do in there. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see. See what it is. Big old feet on him. Well, we're getting everything. We're eating a bunch, getting everything kind of tidied up. Had to half butcher this bear to work on him. It was just too narrow to get to skin him around there, so it was, it was kind of challenging. So, letting him dry off. Oh, Buana, he's packing the skull, packing my rifle, packing my toilet. Oh, yeah, you forgot. I got my toilet paper here. here I'll throw that in there, too. Well, you got your rain pants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm packing the video camera. I don't want anything uh, on my waist here and getting hung up and gonna need to be nimble and quick. Gonna need to be real nimble in this pack. Yeah, it's probably yeah, it's probably not two miles, but it's just lots of up and down and all kinds of stuff. It's this stuff. Jungle. Jungle, I tell ya. In one long push, we made it back to camp in just under two hours. As it always does, it felt great to get those heavy packs off our backs. Some may argue, but I see no harm in a man having a drink or two at the end of the day. Of course, this is done responsibly. But for many of my clients and me, it's an enjoyable part of the experience, particularly once the hunt is complete. Cheers, buddy. Cheers, do it. So like you come to a hunt like this, you're after a bear, but what else? Well, uh, you know, for somebody to come up and experience this hunt, you gotta have the mindset of what you're gonna go try to do. I mean, if you're gonna shoot the first bear and get out of here, just say you shot a bear, that's, you know, some hunters do that. But what we were after was a really quality bear and we kind of had a 10 foot mark as our goal. It didn't have to be, but that was kind of our goal. And we were able to see those kinds of bears. But then old Blondie here's come into the game and, and, and created a, a real hunt out of it. We kept seeing him, it was kind of his valley. He never was in, our, I don't think he was in our range, but one day, maybe two at best, he was just over the other side of our hunting line. Right. And it made it a challenge to, you know, we, we had him marked in another particular bear that we never actually hey, seen you know, again. There goes the fox right there. Is he right here? Yep. Now he probably smells that bear. Yeah. You gotta turn your right. Oh, there she goes. I'm gonna come right up to you. Oh yeah, she's coming in. Coming in hot. See ya. So yeah, here's, here I'll get our trail of where we, uh, okay, yeah, so this is where we went up. We started, went in this drainage, then we climbed up to here, then we went up, got up here, then we looked for the, the bears just to make sure they didn't go up and over, and then we worked the spine, and then we waited right here. The and then we the ended up shooting them 800 <laughs> yards farther away back over there. And so to come out, we came looped around all this horn here and then came back, back to camp. And that's all I have to say about that. So yeah, we were, uh, there was another, uh, Another guy hunting and he shot, I guess it's a big old slob of a bear, I guess he had no teeth left. Shot it the first day right on the beach. <laughs> Would we have shot a big old slob of a bear first day right on the beach? Absolutely. Yeah, There's say. no doubt about it, so that's not the point. It's nice when you get those, you know, those lucky that's deals great. that work out that way. <laughs> But like I've always said, when somebody comes to your house and you want to show them a mount, the first one you walk to and show them is the one that's got we the got story. Like I got to tell you this story. That's that's what a taxidermy is all about. That's yeah, that's what hunting's all about. Is just going there and kind of 
finding a challenge and then overcoming it, you know, like that bear, you know, it was, it's the fact that, it, it, yeah, we had so much history and we had to wait for it and exercise all those senses and skills and instincts you have as a hunter. And then the physical aspect to climb up the mountain, we got to locate them. I mean, that it was so tough and then packing them up. I mean, that pack yeah. out was it wasn't real far, le probably less than two miles, uh, but brutal. it was brutal. brutal. I, mean, I mean, it was dangerous. And, and Rob took my rifle, which <laughs> helped me a ton so that I didn't catch up on so much brush. So yeah, my pack's probably 130 pounds. You had that <laughs> skull, which, yeah, yeah. Every, at least 20, 25, and then the rifle. So I mean, you had probably 50, 60 pound pack. So I mean, that's that's heavy. Yeah, that's a, yeah, for a guy that doesn't do it like you do, I mean, yeah, you know, I, I get it once a season maybe, and you get it. Yeah, many a day. But a heck of an adventure. You can't. Uh, I can't think of very many people who would bear hunt in the first place, but then, <laughs> <laughs> then they have this kind. Of, I don't think I could top this actually. I yeah, mean, you know, it's it's a wonderful country, and it's harsh, but uh, it's quite the adventure. That's for sure. Throughout our hunt, Rob and I talked about sheep hunting in the Brooks Range. I told him success isn't what it used to be, but it's still one of the greatest wilderness hunting experiences left in Alaska. Before Rob and I left this hunt, we set the date to hunt the Brooks Range together. You got the pilot on the way, he's early. Maybe he's going to get somebody else or something. I'll hail him. Pretty curious. 11 a.m. May 26th, Rob's already in town. Plane came in, picked him up. So yeah, I guess I'm gonna try to fly into Anchorage yet today. So I gotta get to town and then head to Anchorage. So it's a mad rush. Got most of the stuff packed up, packing everything to the beach. And uh, yeah, spring season's over. It was a good one, great one. A couple of great hunts, great hunts. Excellent spring, gonna miss this place, kinda miss it already. Going back home for a hot summer, coming back up for the fall. Looking forward to it already. Here comes my bird. Got one more load to go. I'll be ready, timed it out just right. Neatly done, Matthew. The way I see it, whether you're jigging for crappies in a farm pond, or chasing brown bears on the Alaska Peninsula. It's not the inches, it's not the points or the pounds that call us back to nature. What brings us back is the challenges we encounter, how we overcome them, and what we learn in doing so. It's the people we share the adventure with, and how that experience and those people enrich our lives. I've guided for many bears that were bigger than Lonnie and Rob's, but that spring season, chasing brown bears in the high country with those two gentlemen was perhaps my greatest. I was reminded on these hunts that what you put into something is what you get out of it. Looking back 20 years ago when I first ventured to Alaska, I'd have to say I was doing it to prove myself. These days, I now go to the wilderness to discover myself. What I've gleaned from my journey thus far is that I'm proud of my country, that I would give up my life for my family, and the only thing we should fear is our creator. I didn't draw these conclusions by following the wide, easy path, but rather, my philosophy stems from the fact that I've been enthralled by nature for as long as I can remember. As we delve deeper into the wild, inevitably, we become lost. Being lost causes us to seek. If we seek, we shall find. I believe each of us is gifted with a purpose in this life a purpose that is greater than ourselves. Mine is found in the wilderness, somewhere between the oceans and the high country, fulfilling God's purpose for my life 
ensures my return. Fire in the hole. I try. I mean, oh, you did. A lot of grab, a lot of gravity in this big guy. <laughs> <laughs> Push it down on the moon. Just think what those old timers, 40 or 50 years ago, chasing bears up here, what they'd have thought of a jet boil. Yeah, you gotta love it. Oh yeah, you be impressed with us. It's, I think it's pretty awesome that what we did. I mean, I had to wait for you a lot when you're messing around with cameras and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, for the average schmo to come up and, and throw so, 50, not, 60 no, pounds on his back. No, no, I mean, the, the <laughs> tip is tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's 12, it's 12, 12 right now. Yeah. It's after midnight, quarter after midnight. Kind of pulled out all the, all the rabbits out of the hat for you. Uh, oh, on ones. this hunt? Yeah. Oh, I, I knew there was a big old fat tip at the end of the rainbow when I saw you. Now, you, wow, we to, it, yeah, now we get to talk I about got, tipping. When you told me, when well, you told me, me some tipping when you told on. me you had 4,500 acres, I'm thinking in I, in Illinois. Oh yeah, stand them up to, to hang in there and. That sound right? No. That makes sense. Shut shut the camera. <laughs> I'm not 100 percent sure I'm gonna brush my teeth tonight. That's get out. Just how. Just how loose you are. Yeah, yeah, I'm carefree. What are we fixing a tractor or what? <laughs> Hitching my truck. The truck. I got a blown tire. <laughs> that was 20 years ago. 20 years ago, I went to guide school. 20 years ago, this was my dream. You made it happen today. Or this, hey. this. <laughs> so, you have any words of wisdom for us? Before I shut her down for the evening. Shut it up, big guy. Shut her, shut her down. Shut that, her down. That's probably the wise, the wise yeah. move. For more information on other DVDs, books, and modern-day mountain man apparel, log on to BillyMolesAdventures.com. Here you'll also find information on Alaskan hunting opportunities with Billy for doll sheep, caribou, moose, brown bear grizzly bear, as well as white-tailed deer hunting in Wisconsin. Much of Billy's off-season is devoted to public speaking. He travels across the country sharing his knowledge and passion for the wilderness at corporate events, schools, conservation organizations, wild game dinners, Christian outreach events, and much more. Billy is a master storyteller. Attendees are sure to be entertained, educated, and inspired. Log on or call for more information.